So just start off, some of the names, uh, this is dog patch area. That's actually a uh, space uh, we lived in. Someone from the old warehouse, uh, Al is here, Al Fleming. Here's the old warehouse we lived in back here, this uh, corrugated metal building with a, it had an overpass over the road actually even. We lived in there for uh, several years and uh, when we first got there, it's just raw space. But here's some of the names for Potrero Hill in history. Goat Hill, I'm sure you heard that one. Irish Hill, Dutchman's Flat, Russian Hill. They call it Potrero Hill, Russian Hill for a while. Uh, Scotch Hill, <laughs> Dog Patch, Butcher Town, Poppy Hill, Southern Heights, Central Waterfront, Southeast San Francisco. But the original name given to it when uh, it was owned uh, by Mexico, when Mexico owned all the land, was uh, Potrero Nuevo. And that was when the land grants divided up the areas and uh, this land was given to the Dejaro family, of which we have Dejaro Street. And then, uh, of course, gold, everybody came here. And then shipbuilding. This area is an incredible, incredibly rich shipbuilding. So there's warehouse that overpass going over the street. I didn't realize at the time, but uh, these areas, uh, the flat dog patch area, two of these towns, one town was just like half a block from here. Uh, it's called uh, Dutchman's Flat. It developed at 18th and uh, Tennessee Street and at 22nd in Tennessee. And then the other was Irish Hill. So I've just included my pictures here, but after we go through these, I've included some old photos, uh, ar archival photos that uh, show some of these places. There's no pictures of Dutchman's Flat, just of Irish Hill. But when we lived down there, it was just, uh, it was kind of the end of the railroad era. There were still tracks, still trains at night, but uh, it was a real working class neighborhood and kind of rough, but obviously you could park Check it out. There's not a single car in the street. You know, this is 1979 or so. And uh, I don't necessarily know that this was a weekend. Uh, uh, so, you know, it was, there was a warehouse across the street that was really active, but there was lots of parking, lots of room. And uh, the development of this area was to, just really because it was a huge industrial, industrial build-up area. It was all built up for the war, right? first and especially the Second World War. And again, this is over uh, 16th Street, or 17th, I mean, sorry, 17th near uh, Kansas, and no cars at all. I'd go out a lot of times on a weekend, early morning, uh, to try to get areas that were more deserted. But now this is really, this building's gone and it's totally, a, it's like a show place, more like the show place down there now. It's looking down uh, Missouri Street towards downtown San Francisco. That's what the skyline was like in the late 70s. You know, the tallest thing is uh, Bank America and the, uh, you see the pyramid building, but skyline's changed a little bit. And uh, this is a uh, empty lot up Dejaro Street going up towards uh, Petrero Hill neighborhood house, looking east, towards East Bay. And uh, there was a lot of empty lots like this when I was living up there. How, how many people remember, uh, were around San Francisco and remember Petrero Hill or got around there a bit? Three, four, about, about half. Yeah, it's changed so much. Any little lot like this is filled in now. Two houses were put in this space. I had a hard time finding it on Google Maps, so I had to go back up there and yeah. They put two houses in there. It's kind of unrecognizable. So you could walk into a lot of these lots and have really great views of places. And uh, it's all filled in. And this is the uh, Petrero Hill neighborhood house uh, up at Dejero, where Southern Heights meets right there. And uh, the woman in the center there with the yellow hat on, that's uh, Enola Maxwell. She was a real uh, active, very influential person around the neighborhood and uh, her daughter became uh, one of the supervisors. Uh, Sof Sophie, is it Sophia? Sophie, Sophie Maxwell? Thank you. Uh, 
And a Potrero Hill house uh, harkens back to, I don't have, I'm not going to go and give you a bunch of dates here and stuff. All this information is in the, uh, alongside the narratives. But after the earthquake happened, a lot of people moved to Potrero Hill, right? It was a stable land. Uh, there were a few Russians living around there. Most of the Irish were down on the flats. But people found out that this hill was stable, and so a whole uh, lot of people moved there afterwards. And a big sect of uh, Molokani, I think they were called, these Molokan people from Russia because of religious persecution, et cetera, they moved here. And they were the people that uh, built the neighborhood house through, uh, I think it was through the uh, Presbyterian Church and the Molokani. They uh, hired uh, architect Julia Morgan. She's the uh, architect of the neighborhood house. And uh, so it became a, a central place for uh, immigrants to learn uh, trades, basically, uh, like typing, things of that nature. And it was a cultural center. But it served the community for decades now. It's still there? Yes, uh, it's doing good. And uh, they always run into financial problems. But their director right now is. He's a really dynamite guy. He's been interviewed and some stuff, and he really knows the history and the culture of the neighborhood, and it's really impressive. Uh, St. Teresa's Church. Again, this is a church that was down in the flats to start with, uh, down at 20th and 3rd Street, and then they had a small building, and most of their, a uh, lot of their uh, uh, parishioners had moved to the hill, so they eventually built the hill uh, house, excuse me, the church up on the hill. And they also had a, a school on Pennsylvania Street that uh, I'll show you some of the historical pictures later. When they built the freeway, it caused all kinds of damage uh, to the school, and eventually they had to abandon the school. Uh, but there's a whole history of this church moving about five or six different places and eventually ended up at Missouri and 20th. This is looking uh, east from 19th. And there's a, it's a dead end street because uh, during about the turn of the century, uh, Santa Fe Railroad and, and other people, they, they cut into the hill. They took this tremendous amount of the uh, east side of Potrero Hill and they used this to uh, fill in areas for industrial use, and also they totally filled in Mission Bay, right? Mi originally, Mission Bay went, went back quite a ways, you know, down by the ballpark, where the ballpark is now. But from cutting off the top of different hills, uh, the Irish Hill was totally cut down. Uh, if you're down there today, there's a little 50-foot tall hill. Uh, it was 150 feet in the old days, and it just occupied that whole intersection at 20th and uh, Illinois Street. But there used to be a street just beyond this called Iowa Street. It's gone, totally gone. It was totally cut into, and uh, now you have a few dead-end streets and, of course, uh, the 280 freeway is there. I mean, the, the, original, the original excavation took a lot of the hill, but when they built a 280 freeway, they took even more of the hill. And Slovenian Hall, again, uh, Europeans moving to Petro Hill and establishing a cultural center that's you know, served a community for uh, over 100 years now. And Bethlehem, by Bethlehem Shipyards. Originally it was uh, in this area that was developed. This was a uh, Petro Point. And this whole area had been shipbuilding even since the gold rush down uh, where the ballpark is now, South Beach, there's all kinds of shipbuilding down there and it extended into where Petrero uh, Point is down here. So uh, it had always been shipbuilding for 100 years and then uh, Union Ironworks came in and they developed uh, a more extensive shipyards, really efficient. Uh, they built the, the first uh, metal clad, the first metal ship on the, on the, the Pacific Rim was built at uh, Union Iron Works, which eventually became Bethlehem. What happened was uh, there was all kinds of economic problems with uh, 
industry and Charles Schwab bought the shipyard in like 1902 or eight or something like that and uh, developed it into Bethlehem. He owned Bethlehem shipyards. But during the war, it's just amazing, the production came out of here. 20,000 people were employed down here, uh, three shifts a day, of course, and uh, we can go over some of the statistics later, but it was just amazing, amazing output. Actually, let me just read just a little bit. They, they built one destroyer. I think it took them 24 days from start to finish to build a whole ship. It's just, uh, you know, it's it was war effort, and it's just, uh, it was do or die, right, basically. Uh, where's that part? Pier 70's contributions were crucial to the military power of the United States in World War I. Bethlehem's Bay Area shipyards were among the largest pro producers of ships during the war, specializing in destroyers and submarines. During World War II, approximately 19,000 men and women were employed at Petrero Point, working three shifts a day, seven days a week. At the height of the war effort, productivity was tremendous. The destroyer escort Friedberg was built in 24 days, <laughs> start to finish. And during the war, Bethlehem's Petrero shipyard produced 72 vessels, 52 for combat. So it was just an incredible uh, pace, right? And the activity that was going on over there. When I lived, my place was about uh, three blocks away. And at night, they were still working down there, building barges and things like that. And it was a real symphony of, of uh, noise and just all kinds of, you know, clanging and banging and whistles and riveting and sanding and guys yelling. And, you know, and then there's uh, trains going around the neighborhood at night, bumping off cars all times of the night, the whole place shakes. So it was still really active, blue collar. But, you know, it's really changed, uh, whereas now this is going to be a park, right? Pier 70, it's, uh, they're going to keep some of the cranes in there. They've dismantled some, but uh, now it's going to be a, a huge park, which, you know, much better than just housing, I think. So this is inside the shipyard at was Bethlehem. And Mission Rock Resort was right next to this. This is Bethlehem ship, shipyard in the distance. Uh, if any of you ever went down to Mission Rock Resort, that was a fun place. Uh, uh, about 1970, it, it started. It was just a you know, hamburger, hot dog, beer place. But you'd be sitting there, and guys would come in in boats, and <laughs> there's just all, you know, one time one guy came in, they were hitting something in the boat with an oar. What the hell? They had a shark they'd caught. They were killing. So you'd be out there, it's Mission Rock Resort, and it was. It was a real blue collar place, man. It wasn't hoity toity like a uh, place eventually turned into some club oyster bar or something. But those were the days. <laughs> that's, the stuff, that's the stuff I miss. Somebody trying to knock a shark out. <sighs> and uh, Pier 50 down there, I'm sure you've gone by this, is really close to the ballpark. Uh, and it's all called, also called Mission Rock Terminal. Well, what it was, uh, this Mission Rock, I'm sure you've heard of the Mission Rock. It was a small, really tiny little island. It was just outside of Mission Bay, uh, about 200 yards offshore from, uh, you know, they filled in a bunch of the land in it, but uh, about 200 miles, 200 yards offshore. So they eventually, the uh, whole history of this thing, it was used as terminal and stuff, but eventually they built the pier all the way out to cover the rock. So it's a 20, 20 acre pier now, but it's a, that's right on top of Mission Rock. I never knew where Mission Rock was when I lived over there. It's only from looking at these maps I finally figured it out. And the Caltrain coming in every morning under the 280 freeway, zooming downtown. But you could afford to live over there then. I mean, find a warehouse spot I just saw an ad in the Chronicle. Went over, a warehouse spot. Yeah, okay, 77, hey, cool. You gotta build your own place, great. Uh, and uh, our rents, what do we pay? 500 a month for 3,000 square foot, 18 foot ceilings, and uh, all utilities included. <laughs> 
This is uh, Greyhound's old uh, garage, Greyhound bus garage. And you can see, you can just barely see the little uh, symbol up at the top with the Greyhound symbol there. Now it's uh, CCA, CCA, I almost said CCAC, CCA, so that's the new college. Yeah, areas already changed. The railway tracks are all torn out, of course. There's a balcony overlooking the 280 freeway. Nice place to live, but hard to sleep. And all this stuff is really common. Feed stuff, so, you know, small industries. The place down at the end there is a, it was a coat hanger company, Beverly Coat Hanger Company. They made coat hangers. But you see the railroad tracks go between the buildings and the buildings triangular. A lot of buildings around town that are triangular. This is a, a corner of Connecticut and uh, 17th and uh, it's called the Connecticut Central here but originally this was a really old lunch counter and originally a saloon that was built around 1908. Uh, I have a picture at the end of it called Salvati's. And it, was, uh, it talked about the description of it that, you know, Mission Bay was really close to here. And uh, when it was heavy rainfall, the, the building would actually flood and stuff. It was that close to Mission Bay and all the runoff. There was a lot of places in the city that uh, during the rainy seasons got wiped out. The Willows here in the Mission, in the mission and other places. You know. This is the photo on the announcement. Uh, little Victorian and this huge natural gas tank next door. There was uh, about five or seven uh, natural gas tanks and big oil storage ganks, tanks. Uh, PG&E had a power plant over by the bay and there's big tanks to feed that and all kinds of uh, really explosive things. How do you like to live next to that? You know, I mean, we just wouldn't tolerate today, but you know, this was a place that was cheap to live. And you know, a lot of us, I remember going through the warehouse, we were doing plumbing under the floor and there was all kinds of, who knows, asbestos, whatever the stuff we were working in. We just, we were silly. We didn't wear masks and stuff, but uh, most people didn't want to live in a place like this. We we're like, hey, cool, you know, cheap area and a lot of space for money and uh, can make a lot of noise and great. But I'd still be a little worried lighting a match next to that thing. <laughs> this is the Lefty O'Doul Bridge, which, uh, you know, Lefty O'Doul was a pitcher for the uh, Seals, SF Seals, I guess, uh, back in the 30s. And, uh, this drawbridge, originally there was a small bridge that uh, Southern Pacific had built over the, this was Mission Creek, actually Mission Creek flows out into China Basin here. So it was originally the creek uh, coming from the mission. But this is the beginning of this really uh, important terminus from the land there, South Beach and the main land of the city. Uh, in the 1800s, they built a long bridge way out what became Third Street. You know, just uh, land filled that area and built up a trestle. And uh, so way out Third Street, you can go way out there. It was called Long Bridge, originally to serve as a uh, horse-drawn streetcar. But uh, that opened up the Petrero area when that went in. Uh, I think 1867, they started uh, streetcar service out there. But this is still, I mean, this bridge was replaced in 32 with this more durable, uh, huge bridge that locomotives could go over to service, uh, pull freight in and out, and also uh, streetcars, et cetera, et cetera. But this bridge is still there. It's a pretty impressive thing. And, and the boats, too. You know, this is where the, the uh, ballpark's just to the left here, right? But they used to have these banana boats would come in here. They, uh, they would come right in the uh, China Basin there and offload, uh, you know, the longshoremen would be carrying the big things of bananas off of there. And 
There's all kinds of photos of this in the China Basin building, of course. That was a big uh, offloading spot. There's big all kinds of railroad cars outside of there. Nothing like today. But a really important uh, uh, transportation hub there. And originally that was all shipbuilding. Down the South Beach it was all shipbuilding. This area has changed tremendously. It's a, a real positive uh, uh, outcome. This was originally housing uh, for uh, what was intended 1937 uh, under FDR money intended for uh, for poverty relief relief for uh, for the uh, horrible economic situation. So 37, the money came in. They started building these barrack-like houses, but then in 41. The U.S. got into the war, and all this turned into industrial workers' housing. So on the south uh, west side here, the, all this housing, these are just the foundations left from these old housing projects that were on the west side and the south side and then the east side of Petrero Hill. So what was originally to uh, you know just be housing for people turned into industrial housing for all these workers. And after that left, and I, I read that 40 percent were black workers that were, uh, came from the South for jobs. And then, uh, by the t then by the 1960s, it became 80% black because a lot of the whites, uh, they could get loans easier. And now, uh, you know, that's, that's why it ends up uh, that black folks got, ended up living in these places. And now the city's trying to get rid of the last projects that are over there on the, they're called the Annex. It's on the south uh, east side. So we'll see what happens with that. Folks are really mad and they do not want to leave. But, uh, you know, all this stuff is you know, housing development, Petro Hill. Look at the changes that have happened over there. Boy, everything's filled in. These places have tremendous views. But the positive part, this uh, street in the background is uh, all fixed up. Originally, that was all just dirt street that got fixed. And this the neighbors, they really fought to keep this open space, and they were able to do it eventually. And uh, so the houses are not built there. It's just a place people love is walk their dog or some little open space to look out towards the west there. I have some more photos later on of uh, the development of that. That's Carolina Street, the split. It's a little... There's a lot of these saloons, bars down uh, in Dogpatch, you know, the workers, they'd be in there in the morning drinking, drinking hard, uh, going out and unloading trucks or whatever, getting the goods. But there's a lot of little saloons. Obviously, guys sitting out there really wiped out around 11 a.m. on a bench. <laughs> and Baker and Hamilton. I'm sure you've seen this building down there. It's at 7th near Townsend. Uh, this was an incredibly huge warehouse and really important. Uh, it was there before the earthquake. And when the earthquake happened and the fire went down 7th Street, it didn't jump the street, so it burned everything on the east side. And this warehouse was left, and it was really important because it was filled with uh, all kinds of hardware, and it became a real uh, service point for supplying hardware and goods for, for the city that had lost a lot of uh, goods and, and services. And it's on the historic uh, register, the landmark, landmark status. But the street in back there, uh, now it's all paved. I think there's kind of a little cafe-like looking thing in there. It's just all different than when it was a working loading dock. Baker and Hamilton, there's a, a sign on one of the other photos, uh, 1849. They started up by uh, Sutter's Mill and uh, eventually merged with another uh, hardware company and built this huge location. There's the backside. It says 1849 up on top there in that sign. But there's a lot of streets like this down in uh, Mission Bay and, and even parts of Petrero Hill where, you know, unpaved, just really rough. A lot of railroad crossings and stuff, and worked fine. Don't have to drive a Porsche. This is the Petrero Hill Rec Center up on top. 
and uh, it's real, uh, real sanctuary for kids to have a place uh, to go play ball and stuff. And you might notice uh, this painting up on top in uh, number 32. That's O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson grew up a few blocks away from there in, in the projects, and uh, so the person did a mural. They put up the emulating pictures of uh, important people, and O.J. was one of them. Well, according to the guy, uh, who, uh, the director of the Hill Neighborhood House, O.J. didn't do much for the neighborhood. I mean, he did come back one time and, and visited, but uh, basically he was gone. So anyway, uh, the portrait's still there, but uh, the director of the Neighborhood House says the only reason it's still there and hasn't been defaced is because it's so high that nobody can reach it. <laughs> That's what he says. There is another... Uh, portrait down by that uh, Connecticut Connection uh, restaurant that people did deface the OJ image in there. But there's a very important place for the neighborhood, uh, just a central place, you know, ball fields in the back, basketball courts, et cetera, et cetera. That's where OJ worked out, man. <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, and yeah, I, I kind of wonder about that too. Yeah, Petrero Hill didn't get the nicest rec center, right? But whatever, it's it was op operational, <laughs> but it is just an old Quonset hut. SF gravel, that's where we used to get our sheetrock in the old days. <laughs> the building's still there, I'm surprised. It's still there, that little, that little sliver. Not the signs, of course, and there's two more buildings in back of it all filled in. Walt's Diner. I love these little uh, lunch counters and places. There's a lot of these little places down by the railroad tracks, just little places where workers could go grab a hamburger or something. And uh, the train went right in back of there. There's a 7th Street right across from Baker and Hamilton. And so when a train went by, the whole place would shake. You know, it was like, great. <laughs> but... Uh, I just have a fondness. I mean, Red's Java House is really the only place left, right? Like this. Part of SP's train yards down there. They're 25th in Illinois, in the PG&E power plant. But, you know, not a lot of activity at that point. Here's another one of those uh, lunch counters, Frank's Place. It's now the Parkside right across from uh, the park on 17th Street. There's old box cars and old, old vehicles. This car would sit there for weeks. No one would, I'm surprised nobody <laughs> stole it or damaged it. There was a lot, you know, just times were different. Times were different. And another, that's the other, uh, that same tank that we were looking at earlier by the Victorian, but just from a different angle and some of the projects up on the hill. And, but that whole area though is, uh, they've just built so much over there. The side of that hill, there's a huge project going on and yeah, they want to tear down the projects when, as soon as they can. This was the old, uh, Petrero Theater, uh, it started as a silent movie theater and then uh, they it was just the Petrero Theater to start with and then when sound came in it changed to the new Petrero Theater and uh, eventually uh, was all in falling down, it was all kind of in dis disrepair and it became a practice place for the Grateful Dead for a while uh, and then it became a a church as it is here. Now it's a, uh, let's see, who was that? The uh, Gurdjieff Foundation was uh, renting it. They own it and they just sold it to someone. A lady standing in a, her doorway here looking out. And this is 
another area that had projects originally that were turned to torn down, and now this is developed into townhouses and a little neighborhood. It's all filled in. But tremendous views. The bottom of the hill was, uh, now it's a performance spot, right? A lot of bands play there, but originally it was just a bar. Just a bar that, again, 6 a.m., the place was busy. Guys getting ready to go to work. And there was a paper recycling warehouse down there. It was really wild at night. We'd love to stop in there and look in the door and see them pushing paper around. So lots of light industry and uh, residents, residential living right next to each other down there. These are kids, uh, Samoan kids practicing, rehearsing for a, a dance they're going to do at the, in the basement up at the Petrero Hill neighborhood house. Uh, yeah, really fortunate to get this picture. Kids are great. But yeah, the cultural, the uh, neighborhood house has just been a really great, great place for decades, uh, the community center. Here's the 20th Street Bridge over 280. And we're looking at Bethlehem ship, shipyards. Uh, this is uh, Spree de Decor Park, right? The park that's down there now. And again, uh, Southern Pacific and other entities had scraped away at the hill, but when they put the freeway in, they just took a whole lot more off. And I think 40 houses were damaged on uh, Pennsylvania Street after they built the retaining walls, the houses started cracking and sliding. So they were warned. As the uh, old uh, Petro Hill Library, it was looking a little downtrodden there with the broken glass, but they just didn't have the budget. They've, they've revamped it. It looks really great now. But it served a community for also 100 years, different locations. This spot is totally different. There's a six-story condo there now, 7th Street, right near CCA. There's 7th and 16th. And uh, it's looking west from a spot, right near a spot called Dump Truck Park, where a uh, dump truck had knocked down an overpass and uh, Took a long time to get things sorted out, but eventually a, a park was established on each side of the freeway as a, as kind of a trade-off. But the incident uh, happened, and then uh, became a little parkland on each side. Looking through one of those empty lots again, De Harrow Street. There are a lot of houses like this in the old days, kind of run down a little bit, but you know, everything wasn't all spiffed up in San Francisco. I mean, look at a roof. You're definitely going to get some water through that thing. But, and, you know, it's just people, it just wasn't as spiffed up, and all the, uh, everything has to be so high tech and perfect. You can afford to live there. Wolf's Lunch, I'm sure you've seen this place down at 16th. It's, uh, CCA is right back there. It's actually a triangular building. Uh, here's the back side of it. <laughs> I see a little tight fit in the bathroom. <laughs> and uh, PG&E, this is Warm Water Cove. They're uh, cooling waters, a uh, exhaust into the bay there, so it attracts fish. So it's a real popular fishing spot. These cottages uh, had a hard time finding ease again because uh, so many things have changed there and other fences have been built and trees have grown. But boy, what cute little spots, little little porch. And there's a theater up top, that brick building on the left. And then you got some writing on the back of that other building from a grocery store or something. And just little hints of what was there before. 
This is a near, uh, near 18th. Uh, the Petrero Theater is that brick building. So I can't remember the name of the street. It's uh, uh, Goat Hill Pizza would be that next street up 18th. So we're just one block west of that. Yeah. And a big, uh, big uh, metal fabricator, fabricating business, uh, Conlon and Roberts down at 16th Street. Uh, and again, it says 1848 or 49 up there. That's when they first started their operations in California. And this building's been totally destroyed. Condos up there now. The old uh, Anchor Steam Brewery. It was originally a coffee roastery that uh, the company bought in 67. But unfortunately, uh, I mean, Anchor Steam Beer was uh, started in 1898, and, uh, it was, and, and it was in private ownership for many years. The Maytag family, Fritz Maytag, ran it for 20, 45 years. And recently sold, and then it was sold again to the, uh, what is it, Sapporo, right? Sapporo owns Anchor Steam now, sorry to say. But the building's still there, and it's still making good, good product. This is the top of uh, a tunnel collapse happened in 62. You can see the tracks coming from downtown. And this tunnel collapsed because there was a railway, a rail, uh, railway fire. And it, it burnt for three days, and eventually the tunnel collapsed. I can't believe they let this thing burn for three days. But 25 houses were lost in this thing. So I have a couple of black and whites of that later, if we have time. Another uh, cool old industrial building that's now uh, it's an antique, antique store <laughs> near the show place. It's an old public school down in uh, Tennessee Street. This is around that one of those areas that was originally uh, the old settlements, right? One of the old settlements, eventually Twenty uh, Second Tennessee, but uh, it's being refashioned here. Some kids and a dog playing out there. This is at uh, Minnesota and 18th. It was a grocery warehouse that uh, the trucks would pull in there at night, like uh, 2, 3 a.m., and just sit all night and idle. And then in the morning, before, before the sun came up, the forklifts were out there unloading, unloading all the goods. And then little corner stores, owners, they'd line up in their station wagons and cars and stuff and vans and they'd pick up their grocery orders. This is like before Costco, right? This was a corner of grocery stores would pick up all their wholesale groceries here. So after Costco opened, what, 93? This place went out of business soon after. But back of old cottages down there, near 22nd in Tennessee. This very close to the Goat Hill Pizza again up there at uh, top of the hill near 18th, Queen Anne Victoria and another uh, stucco covered house. Community Gardens, this is over by that dump truck park. This looks exactly the same. It's one of the only spots I went back to and oh my God, I stood in that spot. It looks exactly the same. Thank you. <laughs> Something, they haven't put a condo in because it's a community park and stuff, community gardens, and, and the community has kept it somehow. And another one of these big natural gas tanks, this one was down on Army Street, Cesar Chavez, uh, the Southern Heights area that uh, all those housing projects were. So that one's been taken away also. Looking down at 280 Freeway and so there's more storage tanks down towards Hunter's Point area. And it's rare to have this much uh, foliage in 
the pictures around there, but I found this spot. I can't find the spot again. I guess a lot of the stuff's gone. New warehouse, the old projects. Southeast side. Here's that building you were talking about, Sherry, right? The courtesy, the, yeah, they ripped out all the tracks, but they somehow they've built a building in that little sliver that was open there. <laughs> I lived in one of those buildings, and the train used to go right by my window. You were in the, the auto wrecker one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise, <laughs> the whole thing shakes, yeah. No, there's a lot of that. But yeah, they shoehorned a building right into that open area. Yeah, this is looking down Indiana Street, looking south from the 18th Street Bridge. But that's the way it was. I mean, how many cars are in this park there? You know, there's nothing. There's one car coming, right? Yeah. Chevy. One car coming. <laughs> it's like, now... I don't know what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> and this is looking out from my loft, uh, from where when we lived in a warehouse over there and towards Bethlehem. We were like two blocks away. But at night, boy, it was loud. You hear banging and clanging going out. You could see the welding going on. It was great, all the sparks and grinding and, and you know, whistles. It was great. I really liked it. And looking towards downtown, uh, changed quite a lot. So what time do we have? Because I don't want to, I probably took a long, five to, three. five to three, okay. Let me just show you a couple of these because I want to end in like five, 10 minutes because I don't want to. Let me just show you a couple of, like there's that long bridge, right? Saying there's Mission Bay, there's the uh, Mission Creek going into Mission Bay. Here's that Petrero Point where Bethlehem Steel is down there. But they filled all that in, right? They filled that whole thing in, and that's the long bridge. Originally, they built that bridge on the water so that they could have the transit system go out to Petrero and uh, develop that neighborhood. But yeah, that's all been filled in, and that, that eventually became Third Street, that bridge. And here's... Uh, where Bethlehem eventually got built, and that's Irish Hill, that all got mowed down, that all got cut down and dumped into the bay. This is actually an old uh, Moybridge photo. And there's Irish Hill again. There's, there's Bethlehem. I think this building's still there. I think that's 20th Street. I think that building's still there. But the Irish Hill, see, it was 150 feet tall. It was huge, huge. They tore all that down, dumped it in. There's 50 feet little 50 foot hill, it's pretty small in circumference left, but it's all Irish and it's supposedly really tough. Like these stories are just amazing what, what, what happened there. So here's what's left of it, this little hill. You can still see that. And here's that other district that was close to there, another uh, Dutchman's flat, right, in our area. Here's the inside of the warehouse. Uh, we just built our places with what we could find. Those are old forklift skids. This uses wood. And here's how it looked when I first moved in there. That, where that park is, that was all just a bunch of tires. Across the street there was a building that had burnt down. There was a bunch of wood out there. It was really, you know, just really undesirable looking, but not to realtors. And then they developed the park, of course. That the 19th Street, the road cut, where they started tearing down Iowa Street. They totally tore that side of the hill down. This is uh, Southern Pacific, when they were tearing down parts of the east side of Petrero Hill so that they could have the, the Caltrain line. Well, it wasn't Caltrain then, but they could have their railroad line going down to the peninsula. And then they took all that dirt and rock and dumped it into Mission Bay and other landfill areas. There was a huge lagoon, the Tree Street Lagoon. Yeah. Yeah, all kinds of marshland and lagoons. It was supposedly the best duck hunting in the state. 
what I read. <laughs> but there's some of the landfill. The original shoreline is in the red there, and this around Bethlehem. Well, that's what they filled in. Some more, all kinds of shipbuilding. That's South Beach. That's what South Beach used to look like. All those skids going down. Uh, and it, you know, it had quite a hill too, leveled. And Union Iron Works, which was the precursor of Bethlehem. This was the first shipyard that was built there in the 1800s. And it was real streamlined. It was real modernized. It's unbelievable how modern it was for the times. And rope company, uh, there's all these other industries went in. Rope company, to, you know, they needed huge rope for ships and all that nautical business. And uh, other companies, uh, rolling metal forge. Down on 3rd Street, you had all kinds of industrial places that fed the shipyard, right? Made, got the metal or got the metal formed the right way to get to the shipyard, to put on the ships. This is the first uh, iron ship made in the Pacific Rim, came out of Bethlehem. I mean, Union Iron Works down there, which was, uh, what's it called? I can't remember the name right now. And uh, also a ship that went to this, uh, Spanish-American War, is that right? Spanish, yeah, Spanish-American War. The Olympia, which Dewey, Dewey ship, right? Was built there too. So there's all these statistics about how many ships were built there. We've all gone over some of that. The, the number that was built during the Second World War was just phenomenal. And some of the workers there. And the last project, one of the last big projects they did down there was the building of the BART tubes. I think uh, 72 of these huge, uh, you know, these tubes that were eventually put down to make the BART tube to, uh, to the East Bay it was built at Bethlehem. Here's the pier, uh, the Mission Rock terminal down there that was built uh, on top of the rocks. So there's the Mission Bay and the rocks sat out there just beyond the bay. But after it all got filled in, it was very close to the shoreline, there's the rock itself, right? It stuck up just a bit, but they leveled all that out real, real soon. And filled in some of the land, of course, with a bunch of streets you've never heard of, <laughs> all kinds of different names. And then they, they uh, cut down the top of the rock and they built a, a grain terminal out there. Originally ships would dump their ballast out there, but then they, they built a terminal there and uh, then the company that was operating it uh, for many years, they just used it to offload stuff. Uh, they wanted to do something, the Navy wanted to do something. It got into this 40 year long court battle. The state of California thought they owned it. The Navy thought they owned it. This company thought they owned it. Finally, the Navy won and they just uh, burn all the buildings down. <laughs> and three years later, there it is, after the buildings are burnt down, and then they built the terminal, to, and the, there's the rock. The rock's under there. <laughs> so I never knew where it was. Where the heck is Mission Rock? So there it is. And here's the Connecticut Central at Connecticut and 17th, and there's the old building that was supposedly uh, Salvati's was, a, it was originally a saloon in 1908, and the wood was supposedly taken from an earthquake uh, a building that was built really fast after the earthquake. They scavenged the wood from that, supposedly built this thing. But it, the Mission Bay was like a block away. The water was a block away originally. This is when they opened the bridge back in 32. This is the new bridge, right? There was a little one, originally a drawbridge, and they built this heavy duty one that could take big locomotives and trolleys and traffic, and this is still the bridge we have. Getting the long bridge covering all that spot. And so I'll just show you these housing projects and then, oh, here's Carolina Street, right? That split, see the split street up there and we got a water tower on top of the hill, my photo. And then uh, historically that street was all dirt. You know, it'd be a little scary when it's really rain or when it's really wet. <laughs> 
but it was all dirt and eventually, and a wooden, that's a wooden support for that water tower, right? That's 32, I think, and this is like 38. Then they surfaced the street and separated it. Got maybe a little nicer water tower. And here's a, it's all like the trees are growing in and we have a, a metal water tower now. <laughs> And now the water tower is gone, but you can see how this area, what was uh, originally projects and then the neighborhood kind of fought to keep this open space. Now they have it. It's really a nice little area that's all green. So why don't we end there instead of taking any more because it's three o'clock. Thank you. Any, uh, any dire questions off the top of your head?